So hopefully we all have our <clears throat> packet still from module seven. We would be going today to 7.4, where you would see at the top um, congruent triangles. <clears throat> so real quick, we've thrown around the word congruent a little bit. We're gonna continue to do that, especially here in these next few sections. And the idea of congruent loosely and not in the pure math sense, but the idea of congruent means, for the most part, we'll put it in quote, unquote, um, it's the same triangle. So when you, or when we last left off from 7.3, um, your homework assignment was to do this, where you were given a couple of triangles and you were told to take one of them um, the pre-image, so the SRT triangle, and just create a sequence of transformations that would put this triangle on top of that triangle. Um, so the way we, I'm gonna show you now, is with some patty paper just to show us what we did. It's a little bit quicker and you'll be able to see sort of what congruent triangles mean. What should happen is, when we do this sequence of transformations, R should have ended up on our prime, um, so we probably would have said something to the effect of, let's take R, put it on top of R primed through a translation. So we would just basically slide it up here. And then we would wanna do some sort of rotation. So what I can do here now is to take whatever degree rotation that would be so that these segments now overlap. They basically coincide. And then if I went ahead and took this line here where we are overlapping and reflect this point which would have been t around this line so if we basically fold our patty paper up around that line what we should see is that t would land on top of t prime because these triangles completely overlap all the lengths are the same so this length matched up with the other triangles length these lengths coincided these lengths coincided, so they all had the same length. And in addition, all of these angles in here, these also all coincide, and they would have had the same degree measure. When that happens, we are dealing with what we call congruent triangles. So similarly, here in number six, uh, which was which, this was our original, And through a sequence of transformations, so basically if I just slid this triangle over so that these would overlap, all right, S, T, and then S prime, T prime overlap, do the same thing. If I wanted to, I could show you on the patty paper, fold it up around that line. This point lands on top of that point. And what we end up with, again, is the exact same triangle. These overlap. Okay, so congruent triangles basically mean all the sides have the same length and all of the angles would also have the same degree measure. Okay, when that happens, um, those are what we call congruent triangles. So that's kind of what the top of the page is saying. It's getting at all the corresponding sides are congruent, so they have the same length. All the corresponding angles are congruent, which means they all have the same degree measure. <clears throat> this asks, we may wonder if knowing less information about triangles guarantee that they're congruent so that we don't need patty paper all the time. We don't have to draw it in. We don't have to guarantee that all three angles and all three sides are actually the same. Is there, are there other ways we can do that with a little bit less information? So that's kind of what this next one is gonna ask you. So it says, for example, we may wonder if knowing that two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding two angles and the included side of another of excuse me let me read that again uh, we may wonder if knowing that two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding two angles and the included side of another triangle a set of criteria that we would call notice this phrase here a or abbreviation a s a because we have an angle so if we look at this angle here <clears throat> we have a side and then we have the very next angle so notice how the side is in between your angles 
in that little abbreviation ASA, that is because this side lies in between two angles. All right. Um, so would us knowing that two angles, so these two guys, and the included side, is that enough for us to know that these triangles are in fact congruent? And if we think this is enough information, how might we justify that? Um, so in this case, <clears throat> again, if you were in school today, there would be a lot of patty paper usage. That's kind of what they want you to get at here. Um, so if I were to sketch this out, Make this A, B, C, um, double tick on this one, and then this one. What that's telling us over here is when we see the one tick here, that's telling us that this side is congruent to this side. So that means they have the same length. When we see one arc here, one arc here, that means angle A and angle R are congruent. And when we see the two ticks for angle B and two ticks for angle S, that means angle B and angle S are congruent. So if we know that an angle and then the corresponding side that's cor uh, adjacent to that angle along with the very next angle, if we know those three things are congruent, would these triangles end up being congruent overall? Meaning would this side have the same length as this side? would this side have the same length as this side? So it says based on the diagram, which angles are congruent? So let's fill in that part first. Angle A, so if you kind of notice, this is our angle symbol, is congruent. So congruent, we've thrown this around a little bit, I think I've shown this a time or two, um, is an equal sign with a little squiggly above it. That's our congruent symbol. And angle A is congruent to angle R. So that means if we pulled out our protractor and measured the degree measure of this angle, we measure the degree measure of that angle, they're gonna have the exact same degree measure, okay? The other angles that would be congruent, um, angle B is congruent to angle S. Oops. Uh, it's not a good eraser. So angle B is congruent to angle S because those are the two angles that are marked with double tick marks. And then the final angles that are congruent would be angle C is congruent to angle T. So that's how we write an angle. This is the angle symbol. This is how we write a congruent statement. Also ask which sides. So the sides are also going to be congruent A and B because they have this tick mark. So we would say, let me make sure you can see this here, yep. Um, side A, B, and then since I, side A, B is what we would call a line segment, we put that little line segment symbol above it, is congruent to, and then notice how we go from the first arc to the second arc. So when we write our congruent statement, we're gonna go from the first marked angle to the double marked angle. So in this case, that would be R, S. The order here is important. When we go from B to C, so the double arc to no arc, so segment or side B, C would be congruent to, notice again, second or two arcs to no arcs. So over here, two arcs to no arcs is S to T. Those have to be congruent. And then the final one is the no arced angle going to the one arc. In the first triangle, that is CA. So that would be congruent over here. Again, we went no arcs to one arc. So that for us, no arc to one arc would be TR. All right. So it says to convince yourselves that these two triangles are congruent, what else would we need to know? So I kind of already showed it, talked about it. But we would need to make sure that this segment here, we, so does the segment CA, is that congruent to TR? That's something we need to know. And then do, do we know that BC, that segment, is that segment congruent to ST? That's something we need to know. 
And then we know two of the three angles. We would also need to make sure let's do three angles or three arcs for this angle here. That angle is going to have to be congruent to this angle. So the last thing we need to make sure of, make sure you can see this, is we would need to make sure that that third angle would also be congruent. So that angle would be angle A, I'm sorry, angle C would have to be congruent to angle T. That would guarantee all three sides are congruent, all three angles are congruent, that would mean our triangles are congruent. So then it says, using tracing paper, find a sequence of transformations that will follow to show that these tri two triangles are congruent. Um, so, where was that at? Hey. How did that happen? All right, so here's this triangle here. So basically, we don't necessarily list them out. It would really be a lot of you just kind of playing around with your patty paper. Um, but what we would do is take this double marked, let's take point B here and overlap it or coincide that angle with its corresponding angle S. And then if we just kind of anchor it right here, um, could we do any sort of rotation to get these angles to line up? And we could. So now these are overlapping. <clears throat> um, the side from this angle to this angle here, those are overlapping. And then if I fold my patty paper up around this line segment here, do that the best I can. Let's make sure you can still see that. What we find then after I do that is that <clears throat> this triangle, when we do those transformations, coincides with the other triangle. So what that would do then is guarantee that these two triangles are in fact congruent, okay? If I ask you to write a congruent triangle statement, all right, the way we would write that is triangle. So we actually draw a little triangle that is the symbol that we would want to use. I am going to go triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle. Again, the order here is very, very important. I went A, B, C. So I went from the one arc to the two arc to what ultimately was the no arc. I ended up putting three here, but I went from one, two to three. So in this other one, I have to go from the one arc to the two arc to the three arc angle, so R, S, T. So what should happen, if you were to look at a statement like this, we would know that angle A is congruent to angle R, angle B congruent to S, angle C is congruent to C because they appear in the same order on each side, okay? We know segment AB, is congruent to RS because these are consecutive. These are consecutive, all right? So important the way that we're going to be writing these angle, these triangles and congruency statements, okay? All right, so now if we kind of move along, uh, let's make sure we understood this as well. We would call this ASA. If we know two angles, so two angles, and the side in between those two angles, then we could guarantee that our two triangles are congruent. That's our first little uh, way of determining if two triangles are congruent, all right? All right, so it says your sequence of transformations, we go to the next page, is enough to show that two triangles are congruent, but how can we guarantee that all pairs of triangles are congruent? Um, we just kind of did that with our patty paper, honestly, with us not being there. Um, th these are the steps that we probably would have done. But uh, again, we're kind of relying on our patty paper right now. And again, we want to just understand if we have two angles, the side in between, that guarantees that our triangles are congruent. All right. So we're going to play around with the patty paper a little bit. So hopefully I have enough space for a few of these. Um, it says using tracing paper, we just kind of follow along here, experiment with the additional pairs of triangles. Determine if you can find a sequence of transformations that will show if the triangles are congruent. All right, and then be careful because some of them do not work. If the triangles appear to be congruent based upon your experimentation, write 
an argument to explain how you know this type of criteria will always work. That is what guarantees that the unmarked sides or angles also must coincide. All right, so for this one, if I were to do this, all right, JLK, I'm draw this out. This angle is marked, this side, and this side is marked, all right? So if you notice, what we now have are two sides, this side and this side, this side and this side. So this is congruent to that segment. This segment here is congruent to this segment. And then angle K is congruent to angle Q. All right, so all those markings tell us what are congruent to each other. <clears throat> if I now have, so what we have, okay, in terms of the way we would set this up, um, is a side, an angle, and then we have another side. So notice how the angle is in between two sides. So we write our angle in between the two sides. And then what we wanna determine now, if I know that, so if I have an angle, how did I have this written? Here we go. So this was angle L, J, K. Knowing that I have two sides and the angle in between those two sides, is there any way for me to take this, move it over here, and get these guys all to line up? All right. So if I were to take this point, I'm going to take, um, I'm just going to take this so that this first tick mark. Uh, now let's do this. So let's take this angle and take it to its corresponding angle over here so that they coincide. All right. Um, what that allows us to do is if we now do a reflection, so if I were to go ahead and reflect this in a way so that point J lands on top of point P, L lands on top of R, would they land on top of each other? And it takes me a little while playing with this but we can see here that that would work. All right, so hopefully we can see that through the camera. All right, that we can take this triangle, do a couple of, you know, flips, turns, um, slides, and create the triangle that we have over here. All right, so the given information, what this is asking is this. We have a side, we have this, an angle, and then we have the next side. And then what we can determine is that, yes, these two guys were congruent, okay? So right now, angle, side, angle worked in the previous problem. We also found that side, angle, side is going to work. So those are two ways that we can prove that two triangles are congruent. All right, number seven, same idea. Um, let me get another piece of patty paper. And this one is, all right, it asks first, what information are you given? Let me make sure we can see this. So for number seven, what we can see are three angles. So one angle, two angles, three angles, that's what we know. All right, and they correspond to these angles over here. And we are asking, are these triangles congruent? So if we were to draw our patty paper in, do our markings, is there any way, so I'm gonna take this one arced angle, I'm gonna line it up over here so it lines up with this angle over here. So right there. And then if I rotate this upwards to take angle two. Um, right here, how did I do that? All right. Um, so if we play with this as much as we can, we can see that these three ticks are the same. But what you're gonna find is, even though these overlap, actually, let me do it this way. There, this is how I want it to look. Um, and then we rotate it this way. Bleh. Let's try this again. 
So let's backtrack here. So this is, oh, this is our two arcs, single arc, three arcs. And let's take our single over to here. All right, and let's flip it. Here's what I want us to see. Here we go, this is what I want us to see. So these guys are gonna overlap, but what we can see that has happened is, even though all the angles are in the correct location, so here's angle two, here's angle two, here's angle three, here's angle three, what can happen if we just have angles is all the sides can have some different lengths here. So when we have all three angles being the same, that doesn't guarantee that all of our sides are going to be the same. So in this case, we would say no. So angle, angle, angle does not work, okay? All right, next one. Uh, if we look at what information is given here, make sure you can see this. All right, we are given um, a side, then we're given another side, and then we are given an angle. So the angle is not in between these two, so we would call this side, side, angle. And then again over here, we have a side, side, angle. So you would have taken your patty paper, Draw these in. Uh -oh. And see what happens. All right, and then there's our angle. So I'm going to take um, this side here. I'm just going to move it over so that it overlaps here. I'm going to try to get this one on top of that one. So again, I'll have to flip it so that it looks like this. All right. Um, yeah. So what you're going to find is no matter how we try and do this, uh, yeah, you can try that. We can try to put the two on top of itself here because we know that those guys are congruent um, these guys would be congruent but what we find is there's really no way if we can try to get it's the shot that I want here mm. yeah this guy yeah there's just no way that we can get those guys to line up okay so that's our side side angle and what we find is those are not going to be congruent so side side angle does not work all right and then the last one that we're going to do for today is next page if we are given three sides side 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 is there anything we can do with those to get them all to be congruent or the triangles to be congruent. So let's draw this in. It's one tick mark, two tick marks, three tick marks. And is there anything we can do to get these to line up? So I'm gonna take, let's do this one. Um, slide it here. So these guys would line up. Let's flip it. Yeah, there we go. So we'd play around with it a little bit and eventually I get it to line up good so that when we slide this up and in here, we can see that these th two triangles do in fact overlap. That the threes line up, the twos line up, the ones line up. These are co congruent triangles. So we would say yes, okay? So big picture, what we wanna take out of this today, all right? Um, we'll add one tomorrow again. We're gonna to kinda of go slow as we 
go through this and you guys learning from home, um, we won't get too in depth here. But when we're trying to prove that triangles are congruent, um, what we just tested, so let me find a little place to write this that you can see, were these, angle side angle, all right, and then the next one that we did was side angle side, all right. Uh, the one we did after that was angle, angle, angle. And then the one that we did after that, side, side, angle. And then the one that we finished with was side, side, side. All right. So what we found is this does work if we know an angle, the side, and then the next angle. So two angles and the side in between. If those are all congruent between our two triangles and we know our triangles are congruent. If we know two sides and the angle in between those two sides, that worked. If we knew all the angles, that did not work because the sides aren't necessarily going to be the same, same length. We also found that side, side angle does not work. And then the last one, side, 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 is the one that we just did below. We found that that one worked, all right? So just kind of walking out today, just real quick, when we are proving triangles congruent, there's one other way that we're gonna do, do tomorrow, um, but what we just wanna realize right now is these are the three ways, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, and then side, 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 that will prove that triangles are in fact congruent. All right, um, so with that, I'm probably gonna leave you there, um, and then we're gonna add one tomorrow, um, and then call it a day, all right? so. Hopefully that made some sense. Again, make the best of this. Try to stay on top of everything so that we don't fall too far behind. When we get back together, we can, um, can hit the ground running. All right, well, hopefully we'll see everybody soon. Um, have a good night.